Welcome back to the Costa Short. It's nine minutes past 9 a.m. in Monrovia. A few years ago, a group of young American women opened a school in Monrovia called More Than Me Academy, founded by Patty Mallow, supposedly for vulnerable girls. More Than Me helped people to take them out on the street, help them go to school to learn better. Yeah. More than me change, many girls laugh. Because they say I should make our dream come true. My name is Katie Myler, and I'm the founder of More Than Me. And we help some of the world's most vulnerable children get off the street and into school. More Than Me started originally as a scholarship for kids in a slum in Monrovia, Liberia. And then she, in 2013, launched an all-girls academy in central Monrovia. I live in West Point, so I am like, familiar with majority of the girls' stories. What do we have the most vulnerable girls of the street? These girls who have been abused morally, sexually, physically. These are the girls that More Than Me works with. I think that More Than Me tried and tries to do its best. These things that happen are fucking really bad and really hideous. Our friend, but I just have to do it. He said, if I'm doing it, which means I will not go on a scholarship. And he said, Katie bring in plenty of things that will make our life change. So I should not lose my opportunity. It was a tight group of people who truthfully, truthfully believe they're doing something amazing and good. Who truthfully believe that the institutions in Liberia are so bad that you really can't get worse. So there's nothing that they can do that they don't see as a win for those kids, including the unthinkable. Look at an 11 years old child or 12 years old. I couldn't really imagine that they were really having sex. See what they have to live with. See how young they are for their life to, to have a question mark, I will say it that way. More Than Me Foundation. The More Than Me Foundation from Washington, D.C. provides scholarships, uniforms, and supplies to help young girls in Liberia attend school and further their education. Abigail, on your face, you flash mobbed. You learned how to use Twitter for the first time. And you did this for Abigail, a little girl in Liberia who doesn't have a mom or a dad, a girl who was on the street selling herself at 11 years old because she didn't have a glass of clean water. There should be no little girl forced to work on the streets when her biggest dream is to go to school. It always seems impossible until it's done. Now let's go do it! Woo! In 2017, ProPublica set out to learn what happened to a group of students who suffered the very kind of abuse at More Than Me that the charity was established to prevent. This film includes interviews with former students and staff, as well as More Than Me's history, in their own words, as told on social media and in promotional videos. West Point is one of the most notorious slums in West Africa. You know, one of the most notorious slums in the world. children. When she come in the community, she dance, she play. What are you eating? She will pour him and eat with him. Yes, yeah, she loves people. Katie Myler first visited Liberia shortly after college 
interning with an evangelical charity. I made friends with all these street kids and we're drawing, you know, donkeys in the sand and I'm like throwing these, they're naked children in the ocean, they don't have bathing suits. And we would spin and spin and spin and we'd fall on the ground and I looked at these children and I said, if, if you could have anything in the entire world, what would it be? And over and over and over again, these children were saying that they just wanted to go to school. Katie and I met about three years ago. We were in a little coffee shop in Baltimore, kind of trying to pick her up. And then we had this sort of connection. I don't know, we were these kindred souls, these spirits. Holden Warren was an aspiring filmmaker who met Katie Myler in the early days of More Than Me. I got a camera and I followed Katie around. I followed her to the States. And just to try and understand why, why she risks so much, why she does so much. But let me let her tell you right now. I have sweated and donated my eggs and stuck myself with needles and I've gone to medical studies and I have, you know, my mother has like looked at people at my dinner table. It's like all types of criticism coming from every angle and, uh, you know, it just, you get there to West Point and you see the girl um, and it pay it's just so, it's like everything you've been through is like a bed of roses. Katie has this ability to like do things that other people would be really scared to do. Katie's not a person that you meet and you forget. And she comes off to you as somebody who's very gritty and very authentic. My parents got divorced when I was six years old and my single mother of three, um, she worked the overnight shift at a Lipton tea factory making minimum wage. There was a lot of drugs and abuse in my family as well. And the way that I escaped a lot of that was I got really involved in community service. Katie kind of forces you to like her. She's very in your face, and I think with More Than Me, it was kind of like, hey, I'm gonna put this African child in front of you, and are you gonna do something about it? She's a preacher, she's an advocate, she's a, she, that's what Katie Myler is. Is she an educator? No, she's none of those things. She doesn't, she's never run a school or done any of that stuff. crazy thinks that I can love ignorance, hurt, and hate away in the way that I live day to day. I'm going to dance the world's sadness away. Or at least I'll put a smile on your face. <laughs> oh my god! That was awesome! More Than Me was founded in the aftermath of 14 years of conflict that tore apart Liberian society. Children were forced to fight, and rape was used as a weapon. Dede Kwekwe works to reduce violence against women, still rampant after the war. Women were tortured, they were raped, and those ideas remain in the minds of those perpetrators at the time. Some of them were children, and they have grown up, and they don't take it to be a crime. Welcome to my beautiful country, Liberia. My name is McIntosh and Johnson. This is West Point. Katie Myler met McIntosh Johnson a few years after the war ended, when he showed her around West Point. At that time, he organized sports for children on the beach. When we play with the kids and they'd all gather around, he was out in the streets, he showed me where the kids were. They're sleeping under canoes, he walked me through the whole place. I met all the prostitutes. And they were all like 10, 11, 12, you know, they all kind of knew him and hung around with him. I was not in school at that time, yeah. Before I eat, they would use me and give me money before I eat. Yes, actually, I was taking him to be my protector because Magitosh fought war before, and most of the boys are afraid of him. So if he say, oh, don't touch again, he'll be afraid. So he will not come closer to me. When Katie launched More Than Me in Liberia, McIntosh became her partner on the ground. He recruited girls for her scholarship program, sending them to private schools, and later found students for More Than Me's own school. 
Macintosh was introduced to me as the Jesus of West Point, is what she used to call him. Macintosh was a bit of a point person. It was Katie and Macintosh, an American who's there to get the money, and a Liberian who knows what's going on on the streets. And they were that partnership. Macintosh Johnson's house became more than me's home base, painted with its name. Giving out scholarships made Macintosh a powerful figure in West Point. He was seen as someone who could transform a girl's life. While Macintosh worked in West Point, Katie raised funds in the U.S. for most of the year to pay the girls' school fees. L.A., you have helped us get here and open the doors of our first ever academy. So I'm in Seattle, Washington. I just came here because I had a meeting with the Gates Foundation. And we won $25,000. So I was doing everything I could to help that do to help them go to school. I was using MySpace, which was cool back in the day. And I was telling their stories, and people were wiring me money to Liberia. More Than Me posted fundraising videos featuring the girls, but also named at least one of them as a child sex worker and showed her face. And by the time that Abigail was 11 years old, she was a prostitute. While visiting Liberia, Katie blogged about sleepovers with the girls and sometimes took them to parties. She came in West Point, she picked some, some liquors and carried them out half an time and come back. There were definitely things that I found concerning. I've seen Katie show up to a pool party in Liberia at midnight with little Liberian children from West Point on a motorbike. Pool parties in Monrovia can be quite debaucherous. And so there's like no reason for a child to be there at all, especially without their parent. I think people would see things like that, things that you wouldn't really accept in any other country. And I think people were suspicious of Katie. So I just got back from Liberia. Ford Focus gave me a car. I am driving across the country to try and get 100 girls off the street and into school for the first time in Liberia. But then you'd see her do something so breakout amazing. We did it! That you kind of had to support her. It is a four reason. She knows how to talk. She knows how to make her stories and get people attention and get money. But if she really wants to be a girl's education expert, then I will advise her that she can go to school and know something about education. Katie raised increasing sums of money through online contests and clicktivism campaigns. I'm not even asking you for money. I'm just asking for your vote. Give me five minutes to open this envelope. Those online votes were valuable. More Than Me Foundation. In 2012, More Than Me competed for a million dollar prize from the American Giving Awards, sponsored by JP Morgan Chase. The charity with the most Facebook votes would win on live TV. Thank you so much for your support. We're here in Liberia, right next to the future school building that we're building. We have a lot of work to do here, and we need your help. With the new funds, Katie Myler set up her own school, the More Than Me Academy in a war-damaged building that Liberia's president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, offered to her rent-free. And this was literally the happiest day of my life. The one thing you want to leave from anyone that wants to do everything they can to help out here is a real commitment. To expand Katie Mayer's initiative to as many communities as possible and get all those young girls in school learning to become good professionals. The fanfare of the opening day gave way to a hopeful, if chaotic, first school year. More Than Me students would be taught, in part, by international volunteers who were asked to raise $10,000 to participate. And I don't think a lot of them were actually teachers, were actually trained teachers. More Than Me 
company is at an incredible stage of its own organizational development. Um, it has come so far from when Arcadia's dream started in 2009. Michelle Spader was more than me's program director when the academy opened. You own your job. There's no director, there's no manager, there's no person. You do what your heart is telling you to do for yourself, but most importantly for our students. This really could have been the beautiful story that we hear if we had just tightened the organization up. There was an ignorance around how badly things could go if the right structures, governance weren't in place. I think many of us carry different levels of responsibility inside of this. And, you know, I, I hold myself very accountable for that. There was this case for you there. Mm. I've been receiving tons of messages. There's talk of sexual, systematic sexual abuse. It has been discovered that 10 of these girls, these vulnerable girls who are attending this school, More Than Me Academy, ages uh, 12 to 16, have complained of being repeatedly raped on the premises of the school by a man named, allegedly, allegedly raped by a man named Markintosh Johnson. Hello, Michelle. Michelle Spader didn't go on camera, but she spoke extensively on Skype. You're okay to talk on the record? Yes, I am okay to talk on the record. Okay. I applied for the job when I first met Katie. You know, I was excited by the grassroots nature of what she was doing. Another theme is kind of like growing pains, right? Of like kind of taking this organization from a place where there were slumber parties and, and parties and anyone could be at Macintosh's house at any hour to, you know, what does opening a school and introducing policy and all this stuff. But I think the hard thing is that stuff can't happen just like overnight. Michelle Spader recruited Iris Martor, a registered nurse with years of NGO experience to be the first school nurse. She was later promoted to program manager. I realized that most of the children, even though they were very young, but they were sexually active. Because a lot of them were coming to the clinic with SDR signs and symptoms of SDR. Iris first learned of sexual abuse at More Than Me when a student came to the school clinic. I said, tell me the truth. Are you having sex? She didn't want to say, but I could tell from her face that the answer was yes. I said, well, when she told me Macintosh, I just did it. I just went off. I said, how long has this been going for? It was like two years. Two years. So it means she was 13. And two years, so it means she was like 11 when it started. I said, OK. Then I treated her. I gave her the drugs. But I was too trouble. I couldn't tell Michelle that this child is having sex and she said Macintosh is responsible. Why? Because that very day, McIntosh just told me that she, he and Katie had a relationship. Katie says their romantic relationship had ended three years earlier, but they remained very close. The personal relationship there kind of created this problem where people felt like they couldn't speak up, students and staff members. So then it was a few months, actually, until... I told Michelle. Until Michelle. Yes. In those five intervening months, two more students were raped for the first time. I didn't say it all the very minute yeah. I knew because I was between this season. Will she choose the girls over her relationship or will she choose her relationship over this girl? I could lose my job. Michelle Spader started talking to students. Yes, as I, I can say, how about the school? My guitar is chosen or love you too. Michelle quickly learned that Macintosh had been raping numerous more than me girls, potentially dozens of them. It was terrible but in every way. I think my immediate reaction was just like, how could this be possible? 
I think trying to navigate the fact that the organization like hinged on him, right? Of like, what does this mean? You know, this is not a teacher, you know, or someone who's worked for the organization for six months. Yeah, this is someone who has been integral. Chid Liberty is a Liberian-American entrepreneur who joined More Than Me's board. We thought the risk was, do 100 girls go to school or do 1,000 or do 10,000? We never really thought about, do we set up an institution that effectively rapes children? More Than Me's board at the time consisted largely of American entrepreneurs and marketing specialists with no experience running a school. We are bringing to you Katie Borghese, who has so many exciting projects going on. This has been a great pleasure to bring you this new collection. My name is Saul Garlick, and I'm the CEO of Think Impact. Well, I'm Skip Borghese, and I am the host for Perlier, as you probably have known. I've been here for 21 years. The board was completely against us going to the police, and it wasn't until we got evidence from the girls that this abuse had happened on school campus, like on school property. Before we had that evidence, the board chair was more like, you know, we need to think about, you know, how we protect the organization. We need to think about, you know, whether this was our responsibility. And when I challenged him on that, this is what he came back to me with, was like, get off your effing soapbox. And that man continues to be the chair of the board. In a letter sent to ProPublica, Skip Borghese's lawyer vehemently denies Michelle's account and says he expressed concern only for the victims. I was shocked that no board member saw any way that anybody in our organization, except for McIntosh, was in any way responsible for what happened. Michelle Spader reported the case to police, and in the following days, students and staff gave interviews to the authorities. The first day of my school, one school out, then he called me in the bathroom. Then he went and locked the door. I asked him, what you locked the door for? Then I started shouting. Mike and Touch have sex with me plenty of time. I can't count it. My whole body was hurting and my vagina was hurting and I did not see blood. He said that if I tell my grandmother, then something will happen to me. The same day he beat me is same day he promised to help me with food anytime I'm hungry. He never used condom that day. He went during it until I got pregnant. When I told him, he said I should take it out. And I said, I don't want to die. He then say, if you don't take out the belly, he will take me from the scholarship and say he don't know me. On June 16th, 2014, McIntosh Johnson was arrested and taken to jail. More Than Me moved most of the girls who accused him to a safe house for their own protection. The day after the arrest... I thought that I was poor. Katie Myler took the stage in New York. I got a phone call, like, oh my God, oh my God, the worst things happened, I'm so freaked out. She was that day or the following day going to speak to the Forbes 400. And you're basically giving a, a speech to 400 of the wealthiest people in the world about the work that you're doing. I fixed this building up um, with our team. And we, and the building is now, this building, we now have the, the best school in Liberia. She said, Macintosh has raped some of the girls and it's really bad. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you mean it's really bad? And I think she might have said it was like a third of the girls or every girl over the age of 11 or something like that. My reaction was like, yeah, that is really uh, just, just chilling. It's not just the academics, it's the whole girl. Obviously, I was one of the few people in the world that knew what was really going on with the organization. And, you know, Warren Buffett got down and proposed to her on one knee because he's so smitten with this beautiful story that he's just heard about these children being saved from sexual exploitation. So 
how did it make you feel when McIntosh Johnson ends up arrested and accused of the rape of as many as 30 girls? Shitty. I don't know, it was one of those things where you were like, ah, fuck, that's not surprising, all of a sudden. And all of a sudden you're like, and you remember, oh yeah, we did, we asked him about that, and you know, and it didn't, and. In fact, long before the school was built, there were rumors about Macintosh Johnson and young girls. And according to Shikeri, Macintosh's first wife accused Macintosh of sleeping with the girls. And it was the reason why she was leaving Macintosh. Michelle Spader gave a similar account when she first reported Macintosh. Katie said, you know, that she looked into it and talked to all the parties and that, you know, nothing was founded. But she did say to me in that moment, like, basically, like, it wouldn't surprise me. There was one point where we, we did confront him. And because we had heard rumors, I believe it was from his ex-wife, that she said that he was, you know, that he was into young, uh, small girls. And so we confronted him. We sat him down. I think I have video of it back somewhere. And we asked him about it, and he swore up and down that it wasn't true, and what could we have, you know, could, and, and I don't know, like, I didn't run the school. I was just a filmmaker, you know? I, there was an issue. We confronted him about it. I don't know how much more I could have done on my end. Holden Warren would not provide the footage, saying he asked Katie Myler, but she doesn't see how it would be in her interest. In a meeting with the board at a Manhattan public relations firm, where no cameras were allowed, Katie Myler denied that she was ever cautioned about Macintosh Johnson having sexual contact with children. So it wasn't that I was warned, as I asked his first, not the, his first wife, but the mother of his child, why did you end this relationship? And her comment to me was something along the lines of like, he spends too much of his time with the children. And she mentioned something about one of the students being even at the house. I was not, something about the way she said it made me uncomfortable, but it was never explicit. I did come back to ask, do you think that Macintosh is a good man? Like getting a character reference from her. And she said, absolutely, that Macintosh helps kids, that he's a great man. And she confirmed that he would never abuse kids. Board members say they were never told about the rumors from years before. If you want to know if we had any idea that that monster was doing the things that he was doing to those children, your sources are wrong. You are wrong. And if you print that, and if you imply that, you are so misguided and so misinformed, you have a major problem coming to you. We had no idea. In her statement to police, Michelle Spader also recalled a visit she made to McIntosh Johnson's home in West Point. When I gave my statement, I'm trying to rack my brain for, you know, did we miss something? Right? Did I miss something? So, knocked on the door. When McIntosh did come to the door, he like just had a pair of shorts on. And there, you know, were a bunch of students who were in the room. And I, honestly, my first reaction was like, what, you know, what the hell is going on in that room? You know, I, I remember feeling like something is wrong here. But then McIntosh's wife and his daughter like walked out behind them. And, and you know, McIntosh and <laughs> said, oh, we were all just napping. And to me, Looking back, I mean, their testimonies talk about multiple girls on a bed being raped and his wife in the room and his daughter in the room. And then now, I fully believe that that was happening at that time. The rapes and their aftermath upended the lives of the young victims. But the crisis within More Than Me would soon be overshadowed. An international health crisis unprecedented in modern times, Ebola, ground zero, Liberia. The very week McIntosh Johnson was arrested, a new threat arrived in Monrovia and claimed its first victims. It would change the face of Liberia and more than me. Half of the Ebola cases in the world are in Liberia, West Africa. As he's placed in the ambulance, anxious eyes take notice. Watching too is Katie Myler, an American charity worker from New Jersey. This is her organization's own ambulance, bought when it was clear Liberia's healthcare system was collapsing. The ambulance is able to carry the sick out very quickly here. In other communities, it can take up to three, four days before an ambulance arrives. For us, it's 30 minutes. Instagram became the platform where I was just telling the world what was going on plainly. 
My Instagram page was where everybody was getting photos for World News. We watched the horrors unfold on Katie's Instagram. If there is a hell, this is what it was. Time even featured her incredible work in their Person of the Year issue. Iris Martor shared the same honor for her work going door to door to identify and help the sick. Holden Warren was hired to shoot video for More Than Me during the Ebola crisis. And we were in the hot zone. We were in West Point. It was like Ebola everywhere, bodies. Like, what? What? Crazy. And they didn't care. They went in there. They were brave people. Damn it. It was beautiful. It, it still, I still get goosebumps. Set it down. Uh, we're going to the, the place of the holding center of redemption. There's some children there who are orphaned and dying alone by themselves, and we're trying to make them happy. So at least they will die knowing they were loved. And maybe these things can lift up their spirits and keep them alive while they're We can take you to another hospital where they have treatment. And if you get, if, if, if you stay alive, if you can make it strong, you want a bicycle? You want a, you want a bicycle? I will buy you a bicycle. A very shiny bicycle. What color bicycle you want? Red? You what like color red? you want, red? What color? Yeah. Your mom and your pa, they're watching you. They're watching you from heaven. You getting me? They love you so much. Ebola brought international attention and funding to More Than Me's work. The charity's revenue tripled to nearly $3 million, including more than half a million from the US government. More than a year later, the Ebola crisis was over and the charity was thriving, preparing to expand. Behind closed doors, McIntosh Johnson's trial finally began in September 2015. Ten girls testified, one by one, about the rapes, their identities hidden from the court. Michelle Spader was the case's original complainant, and before the trial, she promised a U.S. advisor to the prosecution that she would testify. But in the end, prosecutors never called her or Katie Myler to the stand. In the courtroom, the defense made much of their absence. They were the people who accused the men of raping the girls. They abandoned the case. They did not come to court. I even planned to subpoena them. They could, no, they could nowhere be found within the Bailey of the Republic. They had all traveled going back to the States. So it helped my case. By the time of the trial, Michelle had left more than me and returned to the US. How does it make you feel that your absence in the court was actually a key plank of the defense's case? I mean, I, again, it like makes me sick. Uh, to be very honest with you, Finn, I didn't even know that the trial was going on. I, I had the expectation that it, that I would be a part of that. I, I like I anyone in that organization, you know, and even in the sex crimes unit, um, all those people knew that I would be there in a heartbeat. Katie Myler was in Liberia during some of the trial. What is your understanding of why you didn't end up testifying in the case? Yeah, I was. Not, I, I don't. I'm not like a justice. I don't know everything about the Ministry of Justice in Liberia or in the United States. But I was never asked to to testify, and I didn't. I didn't know that I, that was something I should have pushed to have done. Before the trial, prosecutors had learned that Katie was still in contact with McIntosh in prison. They had pulled phone records, McIntosh's phone records, or somehow the sex crimes unit and showed that there was like continuing phone calls between the two of them. Um, and so I remember having a conversation with Katie of like, there, you know, this cannot continue. But I mean, it was just really obvious throughout this whole process that like the, the conflict of interest there was just like too big. Without any of the Americans testifying, it was the girls' words against McIntosh. The defense claimed they had conspired to lie about the rapes. Many jurors believed it. The jury hung eight to four, just short of McIntosh Johnson going free. 
more than me's leaders tell the story differently. One of the one of the biggest challenges is sexual exploitation, right? The the rape rates are extraordinary and the level of justice is, you know, terrible. So even at More Than Me Academy, we had a rape. Uh, we had a staff member who uh, had raped, raped kids, and uh, that happened in the very first year of the school, and when we found out, we threw him in jail, and he, he ended up dying in jail. Saul Garlick left out important facts. The girls would never see Macintosh Johnson retried because he died in custody with AIDS. After he was arrested, I heard rumors that he's sick, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick. In 2015, two students fell seriously ill. They had been named by classmates as rape victims, but denied it. The school had them tested, and both were HIV positive. Although nearly a quarter of More Than Me students had been identified as possible victims, the charity only tested the trial witnesses. One of them also had HIV. More Than Me says that all the students had access to free medical treatment and that HIV awareness was part of their education program. Did the school, number one, make sure that all the girls in the school were tested, bearing in mind that Johnson had contact with a number of different people? No. Do you know why not? I don't know why. They didn't test the, the entire student body. They didn't tell the community about Macintosh. More than me board members say they were not told at the time that Macintosh had AIDS. I had no idea because I've never seen any ounce of proof of what he died of. That is a fact. I have no to idea what he died of. To this day, we don't know that. Yeah, I, I doubt it. Let me be super clear. It's not my business what he died of. I have no idea. It is not your business. Do you think it's not your business what Macintosh Johnson died of in relation to your students who were raped? We did not. We did take Hold on. We tested the students, and I will say, do you not realize the backgrounds of some of these Our obligation is to the girls not to know Macintosh's cause of death. It took only a quick visit to a government official and a couple of emails to confirm that Macintosh had AIDS. The organization is our fourth year. They decided to help. Maybe initially their intention was, was, was pure, but the person who you use to do the recruitment, if the person did anything wrong, you are held responsible. If Liberia were other countries where parents are highly educated and know their rights, more than me could be sued for their children's illness. To me, at that point, you've done so much obvious damage that you really just need to figure out whether you just need to back up and not be the one teaching young girls. I think anywhere else in the world, everybody involved would be in some way held to account. Including you. Yeah. As a board member. Absolutely. Absolutely. After Macintosh Johnson died, more than me closed the safe house. Most girls remained outside West Point, and the charity continued to pay their school fees. All but one. She was no longer in school and selling herself online to survive. I think if I change and pay attention to more than me, I will be one or one person that will make my family to come up. But actually, after that, after the case, I just feel discouraged because they stop coming to me. Yeah. They can't pay attention if I call them. No way if I go on the campus, they will not pay attention to me. Katie, she carried me far and, and stopped that my whole, <laughs> my whole life looking. I don't want to say anything about my love. <laughs> if I told you that, and that I met one of the students, and that that student basically feels that she has nobody, and that she wishes that she'd never gone forward in the case, because at least Johnson looked after her, yeah. and now there's no one to look after her, how would that make you feel? I mean, terrible. 
I mean, I mean, that means that we have failed these young women who had such strength to come forward and tell their story. But I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I don't think there's this deep sense of responsibility from the organization that, you know, you, you owe these girls something for what they went through. I, I don't believe that that's there. I think that it should be. In case it doesn't even want this to be mentioned, she feels that the case became an embarrassment to her prestige. You know that a lot of times people come from outside and they underestimate the power of Liberians. They think that we are all stupid people with little or no education and our system is fragile and it can get away because their skin is white. Our kid is fierce. Well, it's not true. Iris Martor left more than me in 2017. But the charity star has continued to rise. We're live, and we're <laughs> here with an incredible woman, Katie Myler. And you wanted to sit down, please. Katie has started these More Than Me academies in Liberia. She's from New Jersey. Um, she went to Liberia and decided she wanted to change the entire education system in Liberia. What? So after Ebola, Katie got the ear of the Minister of Education. I know that Katie played a frontline role during Ebola and wanted to do similarly for the education sector. And so here we are looking to expand, and 500 schools would be about 20% of the education system. We have a big dream of reaching 500 schools in the next four years, but we can't do this without you. We live and breathe for these children. Chid Liberty left the board in early 2015, but continues to work in Liberia. I believe that race plays a very important role in this story. There's no way that any serious person can look at everything that's happened with More Than Me and not at least put the racial lens on to explain how this many children could be abused and a whole group of people who were supposed to be responsible for it just kind of were like, well, we did the good part, but like the abuse part, that wasn't us. Katie Myler and her top board members continue to run more than me. The charity says that in the years since McIntosh Johnson's arrest, they have introduced rigorous child protection policies and increased staff training. The organization currently runs 19 schools and says it has some 4,000 students in its care. The customer for More Than Me is not the children. Our customer is the donor. And our customer has no idea what's going on with kids in Liberia, nor do they really care. What makes our customer feel good is to get a video, to get a link, to read a website, to go to a party, and to say, I support Katie Myler. Do you know Katie? Oh, I know Katie. And so as long as the beneficiary is separate from the customer, at the end of the day, what else is a customer getting but a story? More Than Me is about the way we live our lives each day, the way we care for each other, and, um, and take the time and just and love with our lives. We're living for something greater than just ourselves every day, no matter where we're at. Yeah. <laughs>